What is up, my peeps? Joshua Smith at GSD Studios. Thank you so much for checking out today's show. I'll make this extremely fast, but I need to plug our sponsor that's making today's show possible. Our sponsor today is OptimizedLifeNutrition.com with their supplement EMF. EMF stands for Energy Memory Focus. This is the most powerful nootropic on the marketplace. If you are like me and you're serious about having maximum amounts of energy, um, extreme laser focus. If you want to go out there and eliminate your brain fog, be at your best, um, and as well as there's proven ingredients to increase your long-term memory, then this product's for you. Check out uh, more information, see client testimonials at www.optimizedlifenutrition.com. All right, you guys, let's dive on in today's content. So I want to get break, I want to break down like the book and talk a little bit about, you know, the benefits of our diet versus comparatively to intermittent fasting. Um, because I think most people who will watch this are familiar with intermittent fasting. You know, Martin Burkans, who we give credit to in the book, you know, has a really awesome protocol that he's had out there for six or seven years, actually longer, if you're really, you know, an insider bro, um, called Lean Gains. Um, and then there's other people, you know, Dr. Jason Fung has written a brilliant book about intermittent fasting. I mean, listen, all the science, there's so much ample data on the value and the benefit that intermittent fasting can play um, in a person's life. But, but Jim and I have discovered, and you know, a lot more data will be coming. And you know, Jim was just talking about Dom Diagostino being on Joe Rogan's podcast, and you know, Dom is one of the leading people in the world on ketogenic diets and low carb diets and all that stuff. And he's a researcher in the University of South Florida. Um, what's really coming out or coming to the forefront right now is the neuroprotective effects of fasting. And what happens is, in the when you get towards 12, 14, and longer hours in the fasting window your brain is secreting this uh, uh, peptide um, called BDNF, which is stands for brain derived neuropeptide. And this, this peptide is responsible for a lot of amazing things in the human body. But most of us would understand it as the chemical or the message, the message, the signature, the messenger uh, signal for increasing flow state. So essentially when you have BDNF being secreted, you know, in ample volumes, through the brain and the synaptic pathways, you have this enhanced ability to focus. You have a sense of calm. I mean, I think you could probably correlate it to meditation when a person is like deep in that theta wave state where they're, you know, really in tune, they're, they're in line in, 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 in deep met forms of meditation. This is what BDNF is. You probably can make an argument that BDNF is also being released in deep theta waves of meditation. But anyway, the bottom line is, value of fasting is when you have BDNF being stimulated in ample amounts on a regular basis. As Jim just said, the study or the research shows that four times a month doing 20 hour fasts are incredibly, incredibly uh, beneficial and valuable um, from an autophagy standpoint. Essentially what autophagy is, is like cellular regeneration. You're getting rid of the app, the old stuff in, in, and allowing the body to regenerate and bring in the new. Um, so there's just so many benefits to this. And I think, and you know, this is just my opinion, but I believe that we've, we've kind of backed into this or stumbled onto this with the metabolic blowtorch diet, but the value of our diet versus a normal intermittent fasting diet is, is again, you know, and, and this will all be explained in intricate, intricate and intimate detail in the book when it's available. And I think the book is going to be available by sometime in late September. Um, we, you know, we have all, it's essentially, think of it as alternate fasting days. So we designed this program to work with your unique lifestyle. So depending on how busy you are, your work-life balance, you know, you may only have time to train with weights or do resistance training three days a week. You know, you might be somebody who has time to do it four days a week. You know, we, 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 we have, um, you know, we can tweak it and even give a variant where somebody that has five, but we to keep it more mainstream, to apply to everybody in the general population, we're trying to do three and four. But the reality is, is the more you train your body to fast on a weekly, monthly, day in, day out basis, all these are wonderful, um, you know, you get the production of BDNF and you get the wonderful effects that come with it. And again, the value of our diet is, is you're not lowering your body's metabolic rate. Almost every single intermittent fasting diet that Jim and I know about in the marketplace the issue becomes that as you do intermittent fasting long term, meaning you do it every day, it's hardcore, your body being an amazing dynamic organism slows 
and, and, and lowers its thyroid hormone output. It slows down BMR, which is basal metabolic rate, which I already mentioned. And then some other various biological processes just get down to or detuned. So the difference with us is that when you do this alternate fasting day, so again, let's say you choose four days a week to weight train. You do Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday in your normal seven-day schedule. You're fasting on Wednesday. You're fasting on Saturday and Sunday. In that time period on the days after or before, you're eating higher calories in the form of um, hopefully clean burning carbohydrates and essential fatty acids and, clean, and, and lean protein so that your body is not like slowing down its metabolic rate from lowered caloric consumption from fasting all the time. And that's where the fasting diets, lean gains, and a lot of these other ones, you know, there's the warrior diet. There's a lot of these ones out there. They kind of get it wrong because – they're, they're advocating, and again, the warrior diet's not a right one because actually he does advocate it right, but they're advocating that you intermittent fast every day, and we're advocating that you only intermittent fast on specific days in the week, and then you increase caloric intake on the days that you train. So we have a lot of, obviously, research to cite our claims, but more in line, I think, as Jim says, is now we have clients that have been put on this as we've tweaked it because Jim and I have had this diet for two years, okay? We built it. It was in the lab. But we haven't like actually brought it out to the point where like, wow, we should make a real book about this. And so once we decided we were going to do it, we brought our clients and some of our people in our inside, you know, kind of our circle to start trying this out. And guys, honestly, gals, guys and gals, we have had ridiculous, like amazing, like mind blowing results from again, average, normal people, not fitness people, not high level fitness competitors or pro bodybuilders or any of that normal everyday folks using this diet to literally incinerate fat. You want to say something about that, Jim? No, it's just that, you know, the most people know about the fasted state. I mean, when you, the longer you fast, you know, obviously your glucose lowers um, and then you start to burn body fat eventually. Um, and then if your activity level isn't high enough such that you need, you know, glucose um, in that fasted state where you're going to either release glycogen um, empty out your muscle stores and then your liver and then start to break down proteins for glycogen. If your output is low, um, like you're not doing a high intensity exercise, then you're going to be burning body fat. And so these longer fasted periods that we're playing with and experimenting and having all this luck with, um, you know, is a state where you're burning a, a significant amount of body fat and you're receiving all these health benefits. And so, Again, if you can do that and then bounce back and train, resistance train the way we do three or four times a week and maintain and even in some cases still um, experience muscle growth, then, you know, that's, that's kind of what we were after. That was our goal. Mm -hmm. And um, we're, I think we're on it. I think we're getting on it. So, so real quick, the importance of BDNF, um, just for you guys watching and it, listen, I mean, like, again, BDNF stands for brain-derived neurotropic factor. It's a protein that's found within the nerve cells. It's the most prevalent growth factor in the central nervous system. So guys, the potential benefits of having this chemical, you know, this, again, this protein, this peptide circulating amply through um, your synaptic pathways, is, it's mind blowing. I mean, insufficient BDNF can or will cause Alzheimer's, anorexia nervosa, depression. How many people in America today are suffering from depression? Half, at least diabetes, there we go, there's the insulin, you know, controlled living, epilepsy, obesity, which is 73% statistically in North America, OCD, and schizophrenia. So literally, we're talking about a messenger, a protein in the brain that when there is a lack of it, okay, and, and again, why is there a lack of it? Because most people are not fasting, they're not eating cleanly, they're not li living, as Jim would say, an insulin-controlled lifestyle, so all these diseases, all these conditions, these afflictions are happening because of lack of BDNF. So just imagine if you start incorporating, and you don't have to do our diet, but if you just start incorporating, as Jim said, two to three to four times a month where you go 20 hours of fasting and you increase the formation of this chemical, this, this again, protein in the brain, BDNF, imagine the benefit that you can have in your life. I mean, it's astounding. I mean, again, and there will be so much more research it will be you know, soon to flood the market. But I feel kind of good. I know Jim does too that you know, us putting this diet and this book out there 
you know, not even realizing how powerful, I mean, we knew because we have research in the book about BDNF, but not realizing like how powerful and influential this is. It's just, we're in a good place because as more and more research about BDNF comes to the market, you know, we're going to be able to say, well, look, you know, our diet is, Pre, pre, you know, uh, precipitated on that, you know, on, on creating amply the formation of BDNF. So the only other thing I would say to it, and you, Jim, you can have the final say on BDNF is that again, when you're doing it, like I did it to lower body fat, like to the lowest level I could. And I had four fasting days a week. Jim could tell you guys this, I would be texting him, you know, during the weekends, like late in the afternoons and stuff saying like, holy shit, like my creativity was through the roof. Like I was just, I was producing massive amounts of content and doing it like, like I said, in flow state. And so I'm positive and that's with no food in my belly. Okay. There's nothing like I'm talking 17, 18, 19, 20 hours of fasting back to back days on the weekend and just feeling amazing. So there's something to be said about this BDNF. You, you want to have the final say? Yeah. I mean, once you experience it, you kind of start to get it, you know, but um, it really does feel like you're high. I mean, yeah. you're on something and, and it's a good high, something's happening. And uh, once you get past the, you know, for me, it's like I, I, I experienced two kind of episodes of real hunger. And when I get past those, then it's not really a factor anymore. You know, it's more of a habit. But um, then, then when you start to get, get this feeling and your brain changes and, and um, it is, you're in this, you know, like a flow state. Um, right. and, and it's, it's pretty cool. Like I said, if you can do that and then come back and train, um, you know, the, the next day or the day after and, uh, have a good training session and then recover from that. I mean, that's a dream come true for me. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, not to mention the, the health benefits, not to mention. Yeah, that's what I was just going to go into. So, you know, so the reality is, is that it's all laid out in the book. I, I'm constantly saying, um, you know, the book will be available. And, and, and quite honestly, guys, if you guys are watching this, I'm happy to send you the Word document of the book. You know, Jim and I are literally, like, on a daily basis updating it and making it better, you know, making sure the citations line up. You know, we have Valerie Pontani, who's a brilliant creative person for us, who's already formatted the book. The PDF looks amazing. I mean, this is going to be a, you know, very awesome production when it's available to the public. But if you are interested in receiving it and you want to look at it right now, just send me an email, jay at trtrevolution.com. I'll be happy to send it to you. If I do send it to you, though, quid pro quo, you know, make sure you send me back your comments and your thoughts because obviously, you know, we want the more people that we can source this to the crowd, the, the cloud, so to speak, right now, the better off we're going to be in formatting it and making it so that it applies to everybody in society. I did want to say, you know, what Jim was just talking about and, and, and hit on this. Um, this diet is so customizable, okay? I don't want people to think that, like, this is only for, you know, high-level fitness people or, you know, advanced dieters or anything like that. It's not. We actually designed the book so that you have to figure out, it's not easy, I mean, not hard to figure out, but you got to configure, like, what population group you represent, right? Are you just an average Joe and Jane, normal person who wants to drop a couple of pant sizes or dress sizes and feel better about themselves? You know, that's the first group. The second group is like, okay, you're a dieter, you know, you're a girl or a guy, you've been dieting, you followed all these different diets in your life. And you haven't been able to take your body or, or, or your physique to the next level. And you really want to get to the next level, right? So that would be like population. And then the third group, the third group would be the Jays and the Jims of the world. You know, the Joshua Smiths of the world, the people that are already like super elite fitness level, down around 10, 12% body fat already and maintaining that on a year round basis. And now they're like, for, for whatever specific reason, maybe they want to go on an exotic beach vacation. They want to do a fitness show. Um, they want to run a marathon, whatever it is, some, you know, you can now take your body fat using this diet to like literally single digit levels in four to six weeks. I'm not kidding you. I mean, that's how effective it is. So anyway, I don't want people to think that this is like super advanced, that this is only for like, you know, fitness people. It's not, it can be applied to anyone's lifestyle. Fasting works for everyone. Um, you know, Jim mentioned the hunger effect. The hunger effect is literally eliminated once your body adapts to fasting. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're, you know, a Northern European or you're a dark skinned person, you know, closer to the equatorial plane. Everyone can fast. Some people can fast longer than others. Okay. This is just my opinion. I mean, I've read research, you know, there's the guy out there, the blood type doctor guy, I think his name's Dr. Peter Diamo or whatever, but people from Northern European ancestry, which is me, you know, my, my, where I descend from can definitely fast longer 
because their bodies, you know, adapted over hundreds of thousands of years, probably millions of years, um, to being without food, okay, to being like on long, you know, hunter-gatherer type seasons where you literally might go two days or 36 hours or something without food. So, you know, again, from the northern, you know, European, you know, Siberia, you know, just cold weather, you know, um, arid regions versus people of darker skin and darker complexion who are closer to the equatorial plain, they, did, they definitely do not have those ad, adaptation principles. So again, we're talking about epigenetics and genetics here. There's a combination of both. Um, but they're, they definitely cannot fast as long. And I always bring up my wife because Monica does this diet too. She cannot fast longer than 13 or 14 hours. She just cannot do it. Okay. At that, out, at that time, and again, that's fine. We talk about this in the book. Women's, women's adaptation phase in a fasting window is a lot less than a man's. And we, again, we can explain that here. and We can talk about it. It's obviously laid out in the book. But, but the reality is, is that when a woman gets to a point where she gets irritable, she gets, you know, the word hangry, unbalanced, the mood starts to change, they get irritable, they just don't have it right. Like that's when they, you know, you got to eat. Um, and that normally for most women is around 50, like the max for most women. Again, there's outliers for everything is about 15 hours. Okay. But for a man, and again, it's genetic and epigenetic reasons. You know, man was the hunter gatherer. Woman was the nurturer. Again, all laid out in the book, a man can do this a lot longer. Now, as Jim said, depending on your gut biome and your gut health, you know, whether you eat like shit or you treat your body, you know, well, fasting is not easy initially because there is an adaptation period your body and your brain have to get learned learn to use to fasting as jim said you have a hunger pangs you have feelings of like oh my god i gotta eat oh my god but once you can overcome that and you can it's very easy it's not it's not difficult okay it just takes a little fortitude mentally that's when the bdnf kicks in that's when jim says you feel the high effect that's when you feel like wow you know like now i see the benefits of fasting and quite honestly i tell everybody this and i and i, I mean this I've never seen anyone who gave this type of diet a chance. I've never seen anybody that I've encountered amongst thousands of people personally worked with and, you know, hundreds or I'm sorry, hundreds I've personally worked with thousands online who took more than 10 days to adapt to this. Okay. Again, across the board. Now, women are not going to be able to fast as longer than men in most instances. Again, all written about in the book, but once you adapt to this, you can easily throw this in at any point in time. Case in point, I just changed my workout program for my three days a week maximum fat loss program coming back from Ibiza, Spain to Jim's four-day program. And we're going to talk about the program in a second, the weight training protocol. And so in the last two days, I ate massive amounts of calories. Okay, I trained viciously, you know, using Forge Principles four-day-a-week program yesterday and yesterday, especially yesterday was legs. It was brutal. But I ate a massive amount of calories, and I'm fasting right now. So, essentially, I fasted on Saturday and Sunday, long 20, 21-hour fast, and then I ate like crazy. I mean, I told Jim I probably had 4,000-plus calories, actually 4,500-plus calories Monday and Tuesday, and then today I'm fasting. But I woke up this morning – after eating all that food, all those carbs, clean, mostly clean, not, not gorging. And I was super lean, super dry, vascular, you know, full six pack. I mean, it's, it's, just, it's honestly, this diet just, it's just, it's like I said, it's like metabolic magic and you just have to give it time. You have to learn how to do it. You have to apply it to your life. If you're an average Joe and Jane, and I get this from guys that, you know, are reading the book that I put it out there on Twitter and from Facebook, they say, well, you know, I'm not like you or Jim, you know, I, I don't want to be ripped. I, I don't care. I just want to feel better. I want to drop pant sizes. You know, do I really have to fast 20 hours? No, you don't. You can easily fast 13, 14, 15 hours, put it into your daily life grind schedule, shut your food down at nine o'clock at night and eat at 12 the next day and you're fine. You're still going to get the benefits of fasting. But in honesty, if you truly want the diet to work in its maximum peak optimal effect, then yes, you need to extend the fasting window to as long as you can. Like Jim has said a million times on the show, a million times in forums and you know places where he's, at, he's around, he's like, when you're hungry, you're losing body fat. What are your thoughts? <laughs> on that whole thing or just... <laughs> No, just on yeah, the dude. Side. yeah, I mean, it, it's it's just for instance, the guy I work with today. You know, we talked about um, something that he could add, and that was real simple. And we just extended his fasting times two days a week, and he's lost seven pounds. Wow! You 
And this is a guy, of course, that's a, he's, he's got some genetics on his side, but he doesn't work out. And he, he, you know, he just watches what he eats and I extended the, the fasting time. So it is, you know, depending on what your level of commitment is and commitment is and how fast you want to reach your goals, you know, the, it's adaptable to that. Um, even if, you know, I get that guys don't want to be, you know, super ripped and muscular for some strange reason, but I get it. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, this isn't the diet that, you know, you have to follow this and that's what you're going to look like, you know, it's for anybody. And right. so completely adaptable, just kind of like forge training, you know, you, um, there's a lot of ways that you can do it to fit into your lifestyle and depending on how serious you take it and, and, you know, what extreme you want to adapt the program to is, you know, going to match what you want to get out of it. But um, one of the things that Luke brought up here, um, you know, he asked the question, uh, when we fast, are you still consuming liquids? Yes. Absolutely. So black coffee, green tea, as long as there's zero calories, um, that's fine. I wouldn't, however, I would, I would cut back a little bit on the normal, on the amount of caffeine that you bring in um, because, you know, that does a, a few things too. That sets off a, you know, like you said, it's a metabolism boosting liquids and you don't want to get your metabolism too revved up during that fasted state. And so, you know, we're recommending that we're doing like a really low intensity cardio session, um, you know, in that state. And if you're taking something like a, uh, you know, like say an ephedra or, or whatever to really rev your metabolism up or you're getting a massive hit of adrenaline, um, that's going to take you out of a little bit of the that's going to set you in a different kind of energy demand system possibly than we want to be in with you in the fasted state. So I would just, um, you know, cut back the amount of normal caffeine that you, you intake on the days that you fast slightly and play by ear. But I find that I don't need as much. Right. Um, right. So, you know, I, I would just go in saying you're going to drink the half amount of caffeine that you normally drink during that day and play it by ear. <laughs> You know, well said. I mean, we and we haven't even brought up you know using a nootropic like EMF or modafinil or any of that stuff right. into it too. But um, again, there's you know we could. I mean, I, I mean, I guess we're just going to talk this whole show about it. So you know, we're going to go as in depth as we can about this. But you know, some of the other things that are really beautiful about fasting is that, I mean, it, again, it's if you're living the lifestyle that we are always preaching and espousing, which is insulin control living, hormonal optimization. And by the way, the guys last week, I wasn't on the show, but the guys last week, Aaron and Josh, it might've been the best podcast that they've ever done. I mean, we've ever done. I mean, I wasn't a part of it, of course, but I mean, talking about estrogen and how it relates to hormonal optimization. I mean, it's absolutely so next level. You guys have to watch it. If you haven't seen it, it's incredible. I mean, I was speechless listening to these guys watching. It was so good. Um, I don't know if there's anything out on the internet that went as deep as they went because they really got into conversations that really aren't even had very often. And a lot of doctors don't really get into these conversations because they don't know the answers anyway, but it was amazing. So props to them. But, but the reality of this diet, you know, to stay here is that it is adaptable to anyone's lifestyle. Okay. You literally can just be, you know, an obese man or woman in their forties or fifties who literally is trying to save their life, you know, doing to, to extend their life by 10 or 15 years. And, you know, hopefully they're working with a progressive physician as we always say, and they're on metformin and they're, you know, they're modulating their thyroid and they're obviously reducing their insulin by reducing the carbohydrates. But like throwing this in, you know, I heard Aaron, you know, mention this to you, Jim, last, in last week's show. Throwing in the metabolic low torch diet to that lifestyle is just like, honestly, like it's, the, it's a, just a little like it's a, it's a lighter. It's like turning on, you know, lighting it, enhancing the effect because you know about the BDNF, you know about, um, you know, the enhanced lipolysis you know, as Jim said, when you don't have glucose, you have a low insulin signal, your body starts running on its body fat stores as its fuel source. There's also a lot of other things that happen in the later hours of fasting. And, and, and this is why we say to people, clients, anyone that asks us, it's much better to extend your fast window than, it's, than, than, it's, than it is to just cut it short, you know, for fat loss. You know, people say, well, you know, what if I don't feel well and, you know, I've had a bad day or blah, blah, blah. I mean, that's your choice. I mean, it's always going to be your choice. But if your goal is like dirty, hardcore fat loss, again, whether you're obese or you're 8% body fat, sticking to the longer fast windows is like magic. I mean, I've never in my life, and I've done, and again, this is all written about in the book, done every diet. Jim's done every diet. We, we're the ultimate guinea pigs. We've experimented with everything. But I've never seen anything reduce 
if not eradicate stubborn body fat than this diet does. And again, it's not the diet like we're some geniuses, it's the extended fast windows. Now, we do offer tips and tactics and, and tools that you can use in those extended windows. You know, you can use albuterol. I won't get into that, but that's explicitly described in the book, how to use it, do it right. Um, you can use nicotine gum, okay? Again, not to get into it right now, not to have people freak out. Oh my God, nicotine is addictive. You know, people that smoke cigarettes shouldn't have nicotine. We explain all that in the book. But nicotine also is a nootropic. It's a thermogenic. When you use it in combination with EMF or caffeine, it's even more potent. So again, all these little tips, all these little tools are deeply laid out, explicitly explained in the book that you can enhance this diet to make it even better than what we're talking about. You don't have to use any of those though. If you're one of those people out there, you're like, oh, I don't or, use Or Jay, what happens when you start to fast and uh, your liver's loaded up on metformin? <laughs> you <know. laughs> yes, you have a massive increase in AMP. <laughs> there's, there, huh. It's true. I mean, there's, there's so many amazing benefits of throwing this diet into um, – you know, an enhanced or optimized lifestyle. You know, we always talk about optimized army, but you know, Jim hit hit the nail on the head last week. He talked about you know the threefold of functional optimization, um, insulin controlled living, reducing your insulin signal with metformin and reduced carbohydrates, and then also obviously reducing your inflammatory markers, which all of those things are being done. You know, and are enhanced with adding this diet in. But it's just, I mean. Again, it's, it's mind-blowing to me because I just came back from a pizza Spain, and Jim knows this and Josh knows this, but I mean, I destroyed my body. I mean, I, I, came, I got there, I was shredded, I looked amazing, and two days later, I was eating and eating and eating, and, and it didn't matter, you know? And so it's like I, I, I ate whatever I ate, God knows, and came back, and nine days of not fasting, but obviously I had been fasting for the two months previous, and I literally went right into it on Saturday and Sunday and I fasted 20 hours plus. I had no issues. I had no brain fog. I had no hiccups. I had no irritability. I had no blah, blah, blah. So it's again, it's your body gets used to doing this diet. And I also feel that once your body gets used to doing it, you can throw it in whenever you want. I can easily, which I'm kind of doing now really, but I could easily go back to a quote unquote normal diet where I'm eating every three or four hours grazing um, higher carbs, higher calories, you know, for a couple of months and, and, and know that that diet, the metabolic low torch diet is always in my arsenal to get ripped, right? Let's say something comes up and they tell, tell me and Jim, that they want us on the cover of a magazine or something like that or, or whatever, you know, and it's like, we got to look at our best. I, I know that I have that diet in the arsenal to call upon to get into the best shape of my life. I mean, I really believe that. Like, this is like the first time in my life that I now feel like I can get in the best shape of my life no matter what in a short amount of time, okay? And that's because we have that, that diet. Now, again, everybody is different. You're all going to have to adapt in your own ways. Some people have like a, um, you know, this, this, this mind block that they can't fast, right? We read about that in the book. You know, I have to eat every three hours. I have to eat every four hours. My blood sugar needs that you know, blah, blah, blah. We're not here to debate you. You know, I'm not here to say, you know, to the bodybuilding community or the bro community about, you know, catabolism and muscle loss and all that stuff. I mean, I literally have a passage in the book that has three studies linked showing when catabolysis or, or when a body of a, a muscle protein goes catabolic, which is again, muscle protein wasting or loss of muscle protein. It takes, this is not a lie. It takes 72 hours of zero calories and a body fat percentage of like less than 5%. Essentially, it's like less than 4% before the human body will scavenge amino acids. Okay. That, is that, that, that answers Luke's question. You know, like one of the things that we first talked about is how do, how do you do this without losing muscle? Mm -hmm. Right. Because we're not advocating, we're not going to have you do a 72 hour plus fast <laughs> right. and you know, assuming that you have body fat, um, you're going to have fuel. And there's one other thing, you know, we're not working out in that state. Exactly. So you're not working out in a fasted state. You're exactly. doing if a very slow yeah. cardio session. And so Luke, like, like the way that I'm, I'm trying it. Um, I train so many days a week. I, I can't do two extended fasting days like Jay, but I'm doing one. And then, um, I'm eating that night 
And then I'm eating probably, you know, on average three meals before um, I head into my first workout the next day. And so I'm fueled back up. And then, as you know, because, you know, you've, you've listened to us blab long enough, you know our protocols, but we bank a lot of calories and carbohydrates around the workout. And so I'm having, you know, uh, a calorie surplus pre, intra, and post workout, and then going back to a, a you know, very low carb existence after that. So anyway, that's that's what we're playing with. Um, you know, I think I think as long as you're doing this extended fast and you get you know three four meals in you before you um, start to train again, you're going to be fine. And on that training day, you're going to have a little bit higher calories anyway. Right. And so so far now, obviously, you know. I'm not competing. I'm not trying to be, you know, a super heavyweight competitive bodybuilder anymore. There'd be no way I would do this, but, um, that's different. You know, it's a, it's a different type of thing. We're talking about guys that are holding, you know, a little bit, um, uh, you know, I I don't want to say freakish size, but you know, guys that are holding a little bit larger than normal average muscle size, you know, that, and you're still able to, to maintain and improve that, um, and do this, this protocol. So. Right. Yeah, I mean, and there's some questions in there from people watching. And again, we thank you guys. Again, if you're watching this or you watch this on the rerun and you want a copy, send me an email, jay at trtrevolution.com. I'll be happy to send it to you. Again, this book should be out into the general public's hands by the end of September. Um, you know, Josh and I and Jim are working on strategies on how we're going to, um, you know, give this book away. I mean, I'm straight up telling everybody this book is going to be free. You will have to pay a shipping fee but we're giving this book away for free. It's that valuable. The information is that mind blowing and critical to helping people health wise. Um, so Aaron West, thank you, Aaron, for watching us. She says any, this is a great question, by the way. She says any sleep tips for women who fast? I start having difficulty sleeping through the night, usually two weeks in. Thanks. So I'll let Jim talk a little bit about the, um, the biology of what's going on. But um, so this is, this does happen. Okay. So, well, well, wait. Right. Two weeks into to a fasting protocol, or two weeks into into what? Yeah, um, are you question. fasting? Yeah, are you fasting every night, Aaron, or are you fasting every day? Do you have like extended fasting times? Right. Um, so maybe if you can answer that, we can answer it a little bit more intelligently, specific to your question. Yeah, I would say that's a good that's a good point. I, I mean, I would just say that I know, and you and I both have this in the book, that ashwagandha is literally a critically necessary supplement to use during this diet. I mean, you should be using it in your everyday life. I mean, it's one of the supplements that Jim and I recommend clearly, um, but it lowers cortisol. It, you know, it's, there's ample research data. When you use um, uh, ashwagandha at night before you go to bed, it's, it has a very calming effect. You know, Jim's used it in like mega doses and he's like, wow. I mean, it's, you got to make sure you're getting a quality brand. I mean, they're, they're readily found on Amazon, but, um, but you definitely want to use ashwagandha before you go to bed at night. And just, you know, I'll just say it real quick. I mean, what may happen, not for everyone, but for some women, again, when you're, when you're deep in the fasted windows and you have BDNF, and you have catecholamines, um, the cate- not to go too esoteric, but the catecholamines are essentially your body producing from fight or flight, your body is signaling the lack of intake of calories coming into the body as a fight or flight stress reaction. So it releases more adrenaline and also adrenaline and those chemicals increase the flow of blood um, to the stubborn fatty tissue in your body. So your resistant areas, which is what catecholamines are and the catecholamines literally get rid of those stubborn adipocytes by flushing them out into the bloodstream and again through the increased blood flow to those areas so um the the reason that you're staying awake most likely if you're fasting into the night and again we don't have all the information hopefully you'll write an answer she said yes she she just did yeah okay so after starting i app, i typically fast three days a week 15 hours 15 to 18 hours each fast thank you so aaron and my next question would be a follow-up question is are you fasting like, what are your hours? Like, what are your windows? Are you fasting? 15 to like, 18 hours each. No, I know, but like, what time? Oh. Is it from 9 o'clock at night through night until, you know, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the day? Or is it during the day? I mean, answer that question. But that's what's happening. You're not, you're not sleeping because you have an increase in catecholamines. You have an increase in noradrenaline and adrenaline. It's keeping your central nervous system elevated. Um, Jim knows a little bit about that from his bodybuilding days. <laughs> but, but the reality is, is that there are ways so she said 7 p.m. to 1 p.m. So she's doing a normal fast at night. So, so I would tell you, Aaron, that definitely, definitely use um, ashwagandha 
I would tell you to start at two grams right before you go to bed, like 30 minutes before you go to bed, empty stomach. Obviously it's on your fast with water. That's going to also, that's definitely going to reduce cortisol. It should give you some sort of a calming effect. Um, the other questions I would have for you is like, what is your diet like um, during your feeding window? Are you eating, you know, do you have any kind of like SSRI? Um, do you have serotonin issues? Do you get sleepy during the day when you eat carbs? There's a lot of questions that we would have to ask. Well, it. well, and um, Claudia asked to have, hey, Claudia, um, trouble sleeping with fasting. I mean, there's there's something that definitely really, really happens when you go to bed hungry or when you go to bed and you don't have carbohydrates in your system. Right. And we all know, right, if you eat carbohydrates before you go to bed, I tend to sleep a lot easier. I fall asleep easier and I, I tend to sleep um, more soundly through the night it's because you get a raise in serotonin. Right. And, um, you know, so, to combat that, we're, we're making sure that cortisol is low as it can be. Right. And so, um, you know, we, we've talked about this on this podcast many times about a, a protocol for meditation before sleep, totally. kind of shutting yourself down mentally. Um, I use a combination of magnesium and then the ashwagandha um, and melatonin. And that seems to help, help me a lot. Um, I don't really have a cure for you getting over that serotonin spike from eating carbohydrates at night, other than making sure that your cortisol is down, you're relaxed and, and you have this kind of sleep protocol set up, mm -hmm. um, and experiment with it to see if it helps. But, um, yeah, it depends. Well, I mean, also, you, the there's a lot of other factors. Them is the, the blue light, you know, you got to get rid of the blue light. You know, you shouldn't have your phone next to you. There's obviously a lot of things that people can do, but I, I agree with you on the meditation, having a, uh, a, an evening ritual or a nightly ritual to, you know, relax your mind, to get you into a state where you're like ready to shut it down. Um, and, and we're talking about four to 500 milligrams. I'm, I'm, a, I'm in the 800 milligram range of a magnesium glycinate or a chelated um, combination form. That's very highly uh, bio, bioavailable. Uh, and then in the ashwagandha, you know, we start at uh, um, one milligram or, or uh, one gram, a thousand milligrams up to, you know, we've, I've taken a lot more than that, but I sell somewhere around two milligrams or two grams of that. Um, I have a couple questions, if you don't mind, Aaron, if you're still watching. And also you can answer too, Claudia. And thank you guys for watching. Um, so you said you fast 15 to 18 hours, um, Aaron. I would love to send you a copy of the book. Um, I would love for you to start applying the book's protocol, you know, in, in lieu of your current intermittent fasting protocol. But my question for you is, how do you feel physiologically, psychologically between the 15 and 18 hour windows when you fast, if you're still listening? I would love to get, get your feedback. Um, because I, I, you know, you, you would definitely would be an outlier. Uh, most women that I know of, and I know they're, they're out there. I mean, I've had some that have reached out to me, but I, I don't know a lot of women that can fast for 18 hours. So I'd love to get your feedback. I'd like to know how you feel both physiologically and psychologically between that 15 to 18 hour window. Um, so if you're watching, please answer that. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was forged. So, so Jim, you know, forged training is coming from us. You guys know that Jim shot a lot of video. I was involved in that too with, you know, Bobby and Josh's uh, video production team. And that's all coming to the market really soon. They're hard at work getting it ready. It's going to be epic. Um, guys, again, and I, I say this, you know, obviously I'm biased, but I don't know of a, of a training program that's more effective than Forged. Okay. I've used everything. I've done them all. There's obviously great results that can be had by other training programs, you know, consistency, muscle contraction, elimination of ego and momentum are ultimately always the key to growth into building a world-class physique. But the reality is, is that there's nothing like that I've seen or experienced what Jim has created with Forged. It's just, it's, a, it's just, you know, again, I'm just gonna, we're going to be really excited to give it to the public, to let people to experience this who don't use it. I know we have a ton of people that use it who are our insider internal clients. They'll never go back to training any other way. Anyone that I've ever like given to, you know, I think people that work out with me, you know, or show up to show, our gym to work out with me and Monica, they'll be like, hey, you know, I'd like to get a workout with you. And I tell people, and Jim knows this, I say this on Twitter all the time. I'm like, most people who just work out and you go to the gym and you want to do forged, you're in trouble. Okay. Because this is not like other workouts. Now, it's not something that can't be done. It's not something that is so advanced that, you know, the average person who wants to look better naked can't use. Anyone can use force. But it is a type of training that literally takes your body to positive muscle failure. Okay? So when you leave the gym, 
regardless of how you train that day with body parts, you're spent. Okay. And then it takes the idea that you can do this more often, more frequently with less volume at positive muscle failure. And again, after one year's time, if you do this right and you know what you're doing, you literally can gain more muscle mass, regardless of your genetics, your insulin sensitivity, your body type, or any of that, than any other program that I know of. I mean, it's that true. I mean, I put on myself at 45 years of age, well, I'm 46 now, so it's really been in that last year, 12, 11 to 12 pounds of real skeletal muscle, okay? That hasn't happened in literally since I first started taking testosterone when I was in my early 30s. It's never happened. So, and I've always been training hard. I've always been doing different protocols. I've always been trying experimental stuff, eating, you know, doing, you know, calorie cycling and if it fits your macros and all that bullshit. This type of training, there's nothing like it. Now, I'm bringing Forged up because Jim's actually taken the time to design literally a variant that can be used or applied to the metabolic blow torch diet. And again, I brought it up in the beginning of the show because – you know, we look at it as, okay, three days a week would be maximum fat loss. You want to fast four days and train three days. And then the other one would be four days training and either two or three days fasting, depending on, you know, what your goal is. I mean, again, ultimate fat loss, you need more fasting days and over a seven day window. Muscle preservation, maybe if you're a newbie, muscle gain, you know, looking better, then you're going to be fasting two to three days. That's up to you. Again, all laid out in the book. But I'm telling you guys, man, I just switched up to the four day variant. And, you know, I love it because I can eat like a pig pretty much on Monday and Tuesday, or I can eat a lot more than I've been eating when I've been fasting. And it's just, it's crazy, man. I mean, I like the people that trained with me yesterday, I was telling Jim before the show today were are debilitated, you know? So again, I'm, I'm like, I'm really excited to get forge training out into the hands of everybody, you guys, the wild the public, because it truly is amazing. I mean, this is Jim's pride and joy you know he's been doing this for 22 or 23 years he's been tweaking it like a mad scientist and you know it's it's amazing so now that i've sold boards what do you want to say <laughs> not much else to say man uh no i mean you know as far as um you know where we're going to ask you to go in the in the workout it's not like um you know it's a super painful you know screaming workout but um, there is a big mindset portion to it. And it's a lot of the program that, that, you know, we've incorporated is getting yourself in the correct mindset to do these sets. And basically for, for most programs, you're going to warm up and then you're going to do two sets to positive failure somewhere in the eight to 25 rep range. Um, you know, and if you go to a true mos positive failure, true positive muscle muscular failure, um, it hurts, you know, it's going to burn. And you're going to have to be in the right mindset to, to fight through that. But those reps where your muscles are burning and um, where, where there's a lot of pain to complete, um, those are the sets where you change, where you grow. And you're forcing right. your body to adapt. And so basically, you know, you're doing um, two sets to positive failure, um, sometimes once and sometimes twice a week. That's it. It's uh, it's real short, you know. I'm my my workouts right now are taking about 35 minutes, and uh, I'm working each body part twice a week. And I'm I'm telling you guys, um, this is the exact same thing I did when I was a insane, insanely huge and strong in a monster competitive bodybuilder. The only difference is the amount of anabolics and the amount of food. Um, as my recovery would go up, I would add in more sets. But this is the program. So now that you know, I'm, I'm in physiological dose of testosterone, 200 milligrams a week. And obviously I'm, I'm in a caloric, you know, pretty close to a caloric deficit all the time to stay, you know, at a certain body fat percentage. Um, you know, I go in and beat PRs all the time. Right. You know, I'm, I'm not PRs from my greatest ever, but PRs from me last week or the week before. And that's keeping me, you know, ahead of the fight. Um, of age related muscle loss and all the things that are happening. So, you know, it's, it's something that it's a simple program. Once you understand the, the principles and um, once you develop the mindset to push yourself into those positive muscle failure reps, then, you know, it's, it's easy workout, man. I mean, I, I've had so many guys, even myself included, right? I mean, you look at this workout and you go, that's not really, that's it. But um, that's it. It's simple, but uh, should be a workout. That's, you know, interchangeable with any anybody's lifestyle or, or goals yeah I mean I mean it's it's absolutely true um, 
you know, the, the, the reality is, is that it just, there's nothing like forged. Um, I, I do want to answer this question though that Aaron wrote. It's a perfect, perfect seed um, to what we're talking about and, and, and why I'm saying what I'm saying. But she wrote, her comment is, thank you guys so much for the help. We really appreciate it. I would love to get a copy of the book. Thanks. I have worked up to that time frame for her fasting window. When I fast, I feel great during the day, tons of energy until I hit hangry stage and my blood sugar drops. Okay, so this is exactly what we're talking about. She said, then I'm tired earlier in the evening and I find my gym training suffers. Okay, so let's stop right there and explain exactly why most intermittent fasting protocols don't work. That is exactly why. If you fast all day and then go to the gym and try to train with low glycogen, muscle glycogen, probably liver glycogen, your training is going to suck. Okay, period. End of story. I don't care. Martin Burkan can come here and debate me. There's plenty of other guys out there that will debate me. They'll, you know, they get into the adrenaline release and you can work off natural growth hormone and blah, 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 blah. Jim and I have been doing this a long time. We know what goes on. You cannot train with any kind of power, explosive capabilities of the muscles when you are in a completely glycogen depleted state. The bigger caveat to that is when you try to do that, you're going to fucking injure yourself. You are literally going to tear a muscle. You're going to throw out a joint or a tendon. You're going to injure yourself, and then you're literally back to beyond square one because now you got to rest. Now you can't even train. So I'm glad you said that, Aaron, because it's very important to understand this is why our diet is, you know, I'll say better because we don't allow you to train on days that you fast. It makes no sense. There's zero sense in doing that. Now that doesn't mean that someone can't design a program where they train at 12 o'clock and fast, you know, till 10 and eat two hours before two meals, like a big bowl of oatmeal and a shake or something like that. There's always ways to create, you know, variants and to adapt to your lifestyle. But what you're doing, fasting all day and then going to the gym, is tantamount to disaster, okay? And that's why you feel the way you feel, because you have no muscle glycogen. So again, our diet takes that understanding and improves on it and says, no, guys, you're not going to train on your fasted days. On your training days, you're going to eat normal. You're going to eat every three, every four, every four and a half hours to keep your blood gly muscle glycogen stores topped off to keep feeling good, you know, have good energy from carbohydrate metabolism and, and protein and essential fatty acids and all that stuff. But you cannot, again, fast all day and then go to the gym. And, and you know, again, Martin Burkans and some of these other guys that, that argue that you can, they're not telling you that, you know, they may be on other stuff that we're not talking about or supporting um, or even that they are taking – you know, some form of like ketones, you know, a, a high end ketone supplement right before they train to give them energy, cellular energy. So all that stuff doesn't apply. If you want to be a normal person and you want to make this diet work, our diet perfects this. It takes the best of intermittent fasting, the long fast windows, the increased production of BDNF, the catecholamines to get rid of stored stubborn body fat that is almost impossible to get rid of with the alternate days of eating you know, above maintenance or higher than normal of calories and carbs, so that you increase metabolic rate or keep metabolic rate humming, and you also increase or increase or upregulate thyroid production. Again, both of those things are essential and critical to maintaining a proper metabolism. So, so those two things, again, are what really make this diet work better than anything else that you know Jim and I know. And so, I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you typed all that up because it's brilliant because it's a perfect analogy of describing how intermittent fasting diets for the most part fail. You want to add to that, Jim? Yeah. I mean, me, me included and a lot of people that we've had try intermittent fasting on a regular schedule like that, where you're doing, um, you know, an extended fast every day. My metabolism literally shuts down in five to seven days. No. I don't get hungry. Um, it, it, it literally crashes. And so um, I've never been a, a big fan of it. I don't recommend it. And that's kind of why, you know, we designed this program the way that we did. And um, I, I just think that your, your body adapts very fast, very rapidly. It's, it's um, you know, I don't know, smart, you know, your body's smart. 
And so if you, for me, I, I think if you're having these extended fasting days, day in, day out, it slows down your metabolism. There's no other way around it. I know people will argue that, but you know, um, me and other people have had that happen and, and it's real and I'm very in tune with my body and, and I, I know exactly what happened. And so to combat that, you know, we, we overfeed a little bit and then we don't obey, you know, any fasted staging in the days that we train. And that was a way to overcome that. So. Yeah. I mean, it's a great point. I mean, I mean, there's, I, I mean, I'll debate that to anybody. Um, as Jim said, I mean, when you intermittent fast, there's also something about, and by the way, um, Brian Fisher asks a great question. He asks, are those workout programs laid out in the book? They're so laid out in the book that Jim got mad at me <laughs> because he's like, I don't want to give the secret sauce. I want it all to be in forged. But no, I, I literally have given my three day program, like literally my personal three day program, you know, that Jim, you know, obviously always advises me on as my trainer, but, but um, then the four day is Jim's program. So he's like, he doesn't want to give up the secret sauce very much. So I got him to give this up. It's literally exactly his program. Now he does change the exercises, but you, when you, when you see it, it's laid out exactly. I mean, you cannot fail. There's no way that you cannot read this and apply it right to your life. If you're going to do the four days versus three days um, and, and, and go right into it. But yes, it's a great question, Brian. It's totally laid out. But back to what Jim was saying about intermittent fasting. There, there's so much data out there from the caloric, you know, the CR people, the Aubrey de Grays, the life extensionists, these crazy people who grow long beards and, and collapse their bodies' musculatures, you know, in the, in the, in the, in the attempt to live to be 3,000 years old or whatever they're doing, um, that shows that intermittent fasting and caloric restriction literally reduces metabolic rate to nothing. Again, the human body is extremely dynamic. And if you short circuit, the caloric, the caloric intake for a long period of time, the body just figures out, well, I don't need food. You know, I'm going to shut my metabolism down. So as Jim said, doing intermittent fasting every day for long-term periods reduces metabolic rate horrifically. And then the worst part of that is, and this is what we really need to focus on, is that when you come off, you're screwed, right? Because now your basal, your basic metabolic rate and your thyroid production are at the floor, you know, your insulin signal is like non-existent. So all of a sudden now you reintroduce carbs, you reintroduce normal food into your life and your body can't even handle it. It can't process it. And guess what happens? You put on fat. Like you literally can be like, you know, anorexic level and get back into a normal diet from doing that type of stuff. And because of all those biological processes are reduced, if not almost like put, you know, pushed to nothing, as soon as you start eating normal food, your body starts adding body fat. It's crazy. And it's anyway, you don't want to do that. We've seen that. Jim and I have seen that with women who've crashed their metabolisms by going to like 400 or 500 calorie a day diets with like that stupid HCG protocol that idiots were doing, doctors were prescribing. And that's when you literally crash thyroid, you crash your metabolic rate, you have all kinds of internal diet, you know, haywire dynamics. Um, you don't want that. Okay, so the reality is, is again, this, this diet that we've devised over years of critiquing, borrowing, and stepping on the shoulders of giants is that much better because we're never going to allow that to happen. Not me, but you as the dieter, is, it's not going to happen. You're going to eat. You know, Jim talked about it. I mean, if you train like an animal, like on forge on a leg, forged leg day, and you want to go eat a pizza and a couple slices of apple pie, I got news for you. I don't give a shit about your genetics. I don't care if you're a fat person or you're a naturally, you know, mesomorphic muscular dude. You can do it. It's not going to harm you because of, again, the efficiency of this diet, this constant upregulation of thyroid, this upregulation of BMR because you're increasing carbs and calories on your training days and then immediately on the next day going into fasts where you get nothing. So your body is almost in a state of confusion. Think of it as like your body is in a yo-yo state where it's like, oh my God, one day I got to upregulate because I got all this food coming in. And the next day I got to downregulate because I don't have any food coming in. So you're constantly confusing your body, which is what you want to do because your body, again, being extremely dynamic and extremely self-regulatory, it's going to figure it out. It's going to slow things down when it figures it out. So if it never figures it out, then you're going to lose body fat on the days you want to lose body fat. And, and when your signal, your insulin signal is super low and on days that you want to eat more, your body's going to increase metabolic rate to get rid of those excess food and calories. So again, it's the brilliance of the diet. You have to try it. If you don't believe us, of course you don't have to believe us, but you got to try it. 
We have people that are normal people that are doing this diet and have been doing this diet for a couple months now and their results are startling, like literally startling, like talking about losing two to three to four inches in waistline in a matter of three to four weeks. And, and, and I'm not talking about like losing the inches and losing the weight, right, Jim? We're talking about people who are barely losing weight, but yeah. losing inches, which is exactly the way you want to actually have fat loss. You don't want to lose muscle. And you want to lose body fat. So the weight, the scale should not move that much. Jim, don't, don't scream at me all at once. Dude, <laughs> there's not much left to say, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm honestly, I'm so passionate. As, as I told Jim before today's show, I've been like deep. Monica's been taking pictures of me at night, falling asleep in my computer at like 1230 in the morning, writing and fixing the book. So it's like, I'm glad I got a chance to talk about it today because I've really been like analyzing this more than anything else in my life. Again, you know, final thoughts. If you want a copy of this diet, I'll send it to you right now. Just email me, Jay at TRT Revolution. Send me the diet. Quid pro quo. If I send you the diet, I expect you to write back to me what, where, you know, if you see things that don't add up or if there's inconsistencies or even you, if you want to provide your comments and your critiques, please, I encourage it. We're not too, too smart to, to learn more. Um, I'm really glad, Aaron, that you wrote what you wrote because, you know, that kind of – kind of like basically just solidified my theory about women at 15 to 18 hours, like really going crazy um, and, and just losing balance and stuff like that, you know, becoming hangry, so to speak. But that's cool that you're able to actually move yourself to 18 hours. Um, and I will tell you this, Aaron, that if you adopt our diet, all those issues you're having right now with your training and feeling like shit are going to go away. I have absolutely no doubt about it. You're going to be like, wow, I wish somebody would have showed me this diet a long time ago. So Email me and I'll be happy to send it to you. Um, are there any other final questions in there, Jim? I don't think so. Um, you know, you touched on, you know, one of the things we, we were just, uh, I was working with Allie on lately. You know, she was eating a stupid amount of calories a day, stupid low amount of calories a day and her metabolism, you know, completely shut down. And so that, you know, it's very common. Um, that That's a very common thing that happens. And, uh, you know, you, you, gradually add calories and, and kind of bring your way out of that and um till you get to normalize you know and then you can start to play around with other things but i think you know consuming too little calories and then fasting long periods a day every day you know those are two things that obviously are going to shut down your metabolism and make things much harder for you so um that's why we designed this that's why it's the way it is you know um that's it man meat and vegetables for the win Meat and vegetables will make your dreams come true. Um, so just a couple final thoughts before we wrap this up. Um, I, I'm, I'm very confident that within the next couple of weeks, um, 90 days to optimize, which is going to be literally like our, you know, entry level four way into the market for people who are literally newbies to this lifestyle, to living insulin controlled lifestyles. Um, it's going to be a fully completely automated product that has all of our training it has all of our, um, you know, coaching. It has all of our instruction. It's all laid out. It's like literally dummy proof. It's like literally buying optimized living for dummies. Okay. So that's going to be in the marketplace very, very soon. And then right after that, Jim's forge training is going to be in the market. So think of 90 days to optimize as like the training wheels manual going to intermediate though definitely it's for anybody because if you're an intermediate you can go and skip certain things and then forged being like the advanced level or beyond intermediate to advanced so like you go through 90 days to optimize you're like damn this is amazing where do i go now well boom you go you progress right into forged okay so both of those products are going to be in the marketplace very very soon i won't give you guys a date but you know if you put a gun to my head i would definitely before the end of august the metabolic low torch diet is going to be in people's hands on Amazon, on our website, you know, buy, you'll get this book for free, pay for shipping by September, late September. I want to say my goal is September 22nd, but by late September, um, the advanced strategies edition of the book, the TRT manual. And by the way, guys, we're going to talk about that next week. That, that book is a game changer. Like I have had people help me write that book that are far smarter than me and Jim. And it's just, we've changed it to the point where we're applying it to the general public Women, we have a chapter in there for you guys. I, everybody hits me all the time. Jesus, Jay, women need help too. Why are you guys ignoring us? 
That's going to be in there. That chapter is going to lead to Monica and Dr. Jim Meehan's book next year, which is going to be called Cracking, um, what is it? I forget, I forget what it's called, Cracking the Fountain of Youth Code, I think, or something like that. But it's a book on women, on women ho- optimizing their hormones, optimizing their life. It's going to be a next level book. It's going to be out probably for second or third quarter, probably end of second quarter next year. And then something I'll, I'll announce right now that nobody knows about, we're also putting a chapter in there for the veterans. So the United States servicemen and women who have been screwed over by the VA, who have come back, you know, serving our country proudly and been literally shit on because the VA um, from a hormonal optimization standpoint is archaic. They're still literally scripting people hormones once a month. It's a disaster. I get tons of guys reaching out to me almost on a daily basis saying help. So we put a chapter in there with Dr. Mark Gordon and um, Aaron DeMar and, um, and Chris Pat, not Chris Patrick, but um, Chris Albert, who are the founders of the Warrior Angel Foundation. So that is epic. I mean, Jim and I are super proud of that. That is going to be very, very needed for guys and U.S. men and women who are in, in service in harm's way and being screwed over. So anyway, that book is going to be next level. That book should be out, hopefully, by the end of October. Now, worst case scenario will be mid-November. But anyway, so, so, so much stuff coming from the GSD, TRT revolution, um, ecosystem, optimized life nutrition. So all that great stuff is coming. We're very excited. We're both deep in the lab on a daily basis. Um, we thank you guys for watching. Josh and Aaron will be back next week. Jim, you have any final thoughts? No, I appreciate you guys watching. Um, obviously, any, any questions, you know, you can either contact me or Jay anytime. Um, we'll get the books out to you guys who requested them. And I uh, appreciate your feedback. Yep, definitely. Thank you guys so much for watching today. We appreciate it.